everybody, and welcome to Dungeons & Drams. Today we're going to be talking about holidays. So it's September, late September here in the real world, and I'm looking forward to Halloween and Thanksgiving and Christmas. And I wanted to think about what kind of holidays my pretend world, <laughs> Domidium, is going to be having. So I have a few ideas, and we're going to get into ChatGPT, we're going to talk about them. We're going to talk about worldwide holidays, we're going to talk about kind of like countrywide or, or region, whatever you want to call it. And then we're going to have some local holidays, which will probably be a little bit more fun and more likely to be what your players will interact with. So let's get over to ChatGPT. We're going to start off with our usual initial prompt. I am a dungeon master playing Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. This part's a little bit less necessary here, except that there is a potential to factor in some of the mechanics of the game, especially if you develop games for your holidays, which maybe we'll do. So, I am world building and would like to come up with some ideas for holidays. These should be worldwide holidays, holidays celebrated by region, and local holidays for, say, a city or town. Then I say, could you list 10 different events that would justify a holiday? What I'm actually going for here was concepts like what types of holidays should we be looking for however it does try to more be specific and give you like a little blurb about these so we're going to elaborate on a couple of them but let's see what it gives us this did a pretty great job it did give me 10 ideas and what i liked here is that it broke it down by the scale basically so there's two worldwide holidays three regional ones and then five local or town ones now this is what i would suggest i have another video which i'll link up top here on how to create a city um, I would suggest doing that first if this is something that you want to implement in your own world or at the very least give it some information about the world that you're currently living in. These are going to be somewhat generic and actually even as I read through them I kind of liked them but if you want it to be specific to your town make sure it knows about your town otherwise it's not going to. Um, so we'll talk about these really briefly and then we're going to elaborate on one from each group. So we have Harmony Day, which I liked this one a lot. And I don't know if it's just the DM in me, but every single one of these uh, holidays that I read through, immediately I'm just like, how could this go horribly wrong? <laughs> so in this case, Harmony Day is a celebration when the alignment of the planes, which happens uh, once in many years. Now, obviously, oh, the planes aligned and, you know, some rift opens up and things come through. Or maybe the, the adventurers are sucked through. We're not going to do this for each one. It's just that feels so cliche it's like hard not to even say it right now it what it did here is it told you what the celebration is of and then kind of some of the things that we would do and this is what we're going to elaborate on i can't do much with harmony day other than magical phenomena contemplation of the multiverse bonfires with colorful flames and rare conjurations that gives me something and if i do want to go off and world build on my own and just use that as a prompt cool i could actually totally do that but we're here to learn about how to use AI to improve our D&D world. So we're going to really take this forward. But real quick. So Harmony Day, we have Heroes Ascension Day. This one makes sense. There's a legendary hero and we talk about uh, them. We basically discuss all the greatest heroes throughout all time. And that makes sense. Regional Holidays, Bountiful Harvest Festival. Okay, that Thanksgiving, basically. Um, Moon Blossom Festival or like a harvest day. Moon Blossom Festival. This one's about a rare uh, type of flower that blooms. So if you saw my previous video I did on plants, this could be one of the plants or maybe you could work the two together very well. Sea God's Favor. This actually would work really well in the world that I have currently in Domidium because uh, our Sea God is Uros and he's kind of a dick. So uh, the Sea God's Favor. This is you pay homage to the Sea God. Then you have local and city holidays. They're kind of what you would expect. Basically the founding of the city. Uh, you have a lantern night festival where you know think of those little lanterns the the paper ones where you light the flame and they fly off into the sky um golem day where people decorate a golem and um the day when the town's protective golem was created okay and then you decorate it crystal cave festival there's a crystal cave underneath your town and we just celebrate it and then artisans festival where it's basically a large uh farmer's market <laughs> or or a celebration like that but that could be a fun way to get some unique items that don't necessarily have anything other than role play to do with your game so we've got 10 different holidays here i'm just gonna pick one of these obviously like i said give it more information about your world and it will give you more information about what works in your world i'm gonna just pretend that this works in my world but i do want to talk about let's let's even go into hero's ascension day i'm gonna prompt this with a little bit more information because i think if i said just tell me about some of the ancient heroes it's going to give me stuff i wouldn't actually use so i'm gonna go to the next prompt which will have a whole bunch of information about what i care about and then i'm gonna ask it to tell me about hero's ascension day 
So I just wrote a whole bunch of stuff. I basically looked through my notes, grabbed a whole bunch of history. Um, there's a few different things that I've talked about here. Basically, the creation of the Earth or the, the world. Um, more so the, the splitting of the world by this giant world serpent. Um, then there is a uh, famous city called Mastic in my world where it was overrun by undead. And it was part of a uh, war called the War of the Curse. Uh, and there were many heroes that came from that. Then I talked about how people celebrate a birthday-like holiday, especially in smaller towns. I talked about this uh, mountain range I have where it exploded from an ancient red dragon, blah, blah, blah. It's called the Diminished Peaks. And then there was a mage city that kind of floated away. Um, and then I say this is the part that matters and part that you'd probably want to copy. Using this knowledge, could you tell me more about Heroes Ascension Day? That's where we're going to start. Feel free to create heroes, spelled wrong, uh, but be sure to tell me their name, race, description, as history understands it, and why they are heroes. Now, I said has history understands it because I kind of want to encourage ChatGPT to maybe embellish a little bit, uh, make them sound legendary. But let's see what it gives us. I love what this came up with. I just read through these. It took the one person that I actually mentioned by name that is a hero of that Mastic uh, city, and it did something with her but then it also gave me three more and I think that's perfect it gives four different people now I'm not gonna go too much into this but I'll give you a brief synopsis because it will be important for the next part so Torley Windmoon she was the one with Mastic basically it says that she led a charge that broke the siege line and and she died valiantly doing that then you have Durgrim Fireborn who after the explosion of uh the diminished peaks that or disintegrated peaks. I always forget what I call it. I think diminished peaks. Um, he took some of the, the uh, mountain that was there in the ore and whatever forged weapons to help fight against the uh, enemies that came out of this whole event. Then there's Lenora Skyseer, who was the mage that actually lifted the mage city into the air. So that's pretty cool. And then Yarix, uh, the Scaleborn, which I liked this. So I have a myth in my world, which was believed to be a myth up until recently in the campaign. No spoilers. But basically that, that this world serpent... Uh, was the one that helped create all the continents by dragging its body across the surface of the land and separating the continents th itself. Uh, but it also mentioned stuff about like this venomous serpent, you know, it turned the bogs into poison, it did all this other stuff, it made giant cracks in the ground. And it talks about Yarix the Scaleborn, who's a dragonborn, which another reason why we tell it which game we're playing, because it will use the races from that game. And in this case, it talks about how he walked across the land, healing the scars, etc., etc cool so all of these things are great but what is a holiday without like something to do right so on this day of ascension what kind of activities are there so we're gonna ask we're gonna be a little metagamey here because we are the dm on heroes ascension day what types of activities are there to do that's not metagamey but what entertainment could i plan for my players now that is and let's see what it tells us this starts out pretty good, a couple are boring, but like, use this as inspiration. In this case, so it says Parade of Heroes, and basically you could have your heroes kind of dress up as who they think are cool and make some performance checks, etc. That's like fine, it's good for roleplay, and if you're creative, you could probably make that really fun. Then you have Tales by the Fire, which is pretty much your excuse as a DM to tell people about your world. This could be a great way to start if you're not doing like a hot start where you just immediately start in combat, but you know, you could start in the middle of a parade, that'd be kind of cool. Uh, and you could tell your players a little bit about the world and more specifically, some legends that might lead them on their next adventure. So that's pretty cool. Um, Heroic Trials, this one's a little bit more dice rolly, which is wonderful. Uh, things like archery and um, riddle contests, tests of strength. Uh, if I were doing this based off the heroes that it generated, I would absolutely look at like the magic user and ask them to recreate something, you know, their most impressive magical feat that will represent what that mage that lifted the, the, uh, the island off the ground. Things like that. You could tailor it specific to your players. Then you have a masked ball, which whatever, RP. Artisan's market, people could kind of go around and buy stuff. Vigil of Light, Sacrificial Offering. That's interesting, especially if you want to make people role play. And especially if you're doing kind of like a darker campaign and this is, you're celebrating more the, the uh, grittiness of these heroes. Uh, Feast of Heroes, Community Service. Okay, so some of these are good, some of them are not. But let's go more into one of the other holidays here because you could see how you could expand upon these. If I wanted to pick any one of these and actually get really crunchy, actually, you know what? Let's do that. I'm going to go with the Heroic Trials and I'm going to say, can you generate me actually rules-based 
games and you know what would I roll etc etc so let's do that so I'm going to ask it to actually go more into detail here could you generate specific games for the heroes trials pretty obvious I'd like you to consider that we're playing Dungeons and Dragons fifth edition and generate in-game rules for how to win compete or otherwise participate set difficulty ranges for success using skills tools or ability checks this did a fantastic job it gives me the idea the description and what you need to roll, or at least how to compute who wins. So let's go to a couple of these. So Torley's Tactical Assault. Uh, in this trial, teams or individuals must navigate a battlefield maze filled with traps, puzzles, and enemy combatants. Could be other competitors or NPC enemies, which I kind of love. I love this. Maybe even have all four of your characters, or like if you have four people in your party, um, compete against each other or something like that. Maybe just a, a rival team. Maybe this could be a good way to introduce a rival group. Uh, skills, abilities involved, acrobatics, athletics, investigation, perception. It's like all the things. Plus, you could have whatever else you want. Survival, if you want. Difficulty, DC 15 to 20, depending on the complexity of the obstacle. Now, the important thing here is to decide whether you want people to lose if they fail or just get a hang up. So that's something to consider. Winning condition is the first team individual, team or individual to successfully navigate through the maze and reach the end point wins. Okay, cool. I mean, that sounds pretty straightforward and open to a lot of creativity. Durgrim's Forge Mastery, basically you are forging something using Smith's tools, strength, or dexterity checks. So now uh, any of your people who maybe decided that they were a Smith in a previous life, they can actually use their proficiency bonus. So that would be nice. A DC 15 for successful crafting with higher rolls resulting in higher quality creations. And you could let them RP to tell you what they're making. You know, you're going to get somebody who's like, oh, I make a dagger because I played a lot of Skyrim. But you might have somebody be like, I'm making this, you know, crazy mechanical thing and let them be creative. Lenora's Elemental Dance. This is a magical duel. Um, so you use Arcana and basically you are making opposing spell, uh, spell casting ability checks. So that's pretty sweet. Um, Yarix is Enduring March, which is a long run over obstacles and such, so you could make them roll things like Survival for Navigation or Constitution for Endurance, and uh, that's that actually pretty much writes itself. This one I liked a lot, and then we'll stop. Fireclaw's Aerial Rings. So Fireclaw, I think I mentioned, is an ancient red dragon in my world, and uh, this has it so if any of your, your players can fly, they're basically going to fly through some rings and stuff. This is, this is a cool thing. Dexterity checks, plus fly speed, competing with other people. Um, all of that makes good sense, and I think that we'll stop here, at least for the world one. I'm going to skip the region one just because I want to be conscious of time. Uh, we'll go to one of the town festivals because I think it's a little bit more uh, homey and like probably more likely to happen in your world. So I decided to pick the Artisans Festival because we just had one that was a little bit more active. This is going to be one that could be a little bit more creative and we can make some items that although maybe like fairly cheap to buy and not super useful, they could add a little bit of RP to your game. So I said, I have a town within my world that's called Alawith Harbor. This harbor is a major trade hub, but only houses a few hundred people. Many of these workers are sailors, fishermen, or warehouse workers. There's a general store, two inns called the Red Sun Inn and the Drunken Seal, and an herbalist shop, as well as any other shops you think would be relevant, because why not? I would like you to tell me about art the Artisans Festival within this town. So I wanted to give it some information about the actual town, that way it had something to work with and it's not gonna just pull from the whole world, especially with all that stuff I just gave it. At least that's the hope, but let's see what it comes up with. The Artisans Festival in Alawith Harbor is pretty good. <laughs> it reminds me a lot of a small town's kind of like annual celebration. We recently had one here in the town I live in called Apple Fest, and it's exactly what it sounds like. You get a whole bunch of shops and whatever, and people displaying stuff, selling stuff, whatever else. And this is kind of what this created, which makes sense, because that town, as I mentioned, is fairly small, even though it's busy. So what one thing it kind of took into account is that there is people here with maybe artistic ability who don't have a reason to have a shop, and I liked that a lot, especially with the idea of there being sailors kind of coming through. Maybe these are people who bring uh, items or even just knowledge from different locations. So um, it points out basically what each store would kind of do for this. The general store puts things out on uh, display like wind chimes and hosts a uh, sell, uh, competition to see who can create the best little crafted thing. The Red Sun Inn, which I like this because I did not tell it this, but in the actual city, which this is a, a town in my, in my world, the Red Sun Inn is definitely a more 
high-end location. And maybe it just figured that out because one was called the Drunken Seal and the other one had a normal name. <laughs> but basically it said the Red Sun Inn hosts a feast and the Drunken Seal is like for music and drinking and stuff. Uh, now the Herbalist Shop um, hosts a thing where they basically teach you how to make small tinctures and like little easy to make potions. So maybe your players could gain some knowledge here. I don't know how easily you hand out uh, proficiencies in different skills, but if I wanted to, maybe I could give somebody like an herbalist kit out of this. Maybe it's a, a free thing that comes along with it. It's, oh, you know, if you partake, you get an herbalist kit. Cool. And maybe if they really show a lot of interest, you could give them a proficiency with their herbalism kit. Uh, so new shops during the festival, these are like pop-ups. You've got Sculptor's Corner, Weaver's Canopy, and Painter's Alley. They're basically what they sound like. Um, you have activities and events, so this is good because it gave us stuff to do. There's craftsmanship workshops, again, with that same concept. You could give somebody some extra tools or some proficiencies if you want to. Artisan's Auction. So this could be where your players could actually buy some cool things. We're going to ask it real in a minute here what we want to put into that auction. Uh, and then the Artisan's Parade, so there's always parades. Now, for your D&D campaign, it gives you ideas of how you could utilize this holiday for your players, which is good because we asked it that previously, and it remembered that we asked it that, and it just gave it to us. So your players could shop, they could go to these workshops, they could compete in some competitions, or they could network. All right, so let's ask it what would be at the auction and also, like, how to run an auction. Very simple. Could you give me in-game rules for how to run the auction? Also, give me a list of items that should be auctioned off. This did something a little unexpected, and it started off great, and then it got a little bit of a problem, which I think you can solve. So what it talked about is the pre-auction, the actual auction, and then after the auction, which is good, because I actually didn't consider the pre or really the post-auction, although I suppose I'd just be like, give me your give me your gold when you win the thing. Um, but if you want to actually role play it out, you've got the pre-auction, which you hand your players like a list of things that are going to be auctioned off. That way it's a little easier and they can plan their money. Um, and then allow them to inspect items. Like if you just want to say, oh, here's, there's going to be a quiver that seems to be really well made and everything's out on a table. Maybe they are able to roll Arcana to see if they can kind of inspect and see that this is a magical quiver that regenerates qu uh, arrows. But something like that is something I did not consider. So that was cool. Now, during the auction, it says have your auctioneer uh, and you got to practice your voice, of course. Uh, control the flow of the event, presenting each item and encouraging bidding, of course. Now, this was neat. It says with the bidding, you want to have some NPCs that are going to bid against your players, of course. But you also don't want to seem like a jerk DM who's just like, well, I want this to cost 300 gold at the least because you guys have too much money. So uh, the auction, no matter what, this NPC is just going to keep outbidding you. That's silly and kind of mean. So come up with an NPC, give them a max value that they might spend on each one of these things. Even have the same NPC bid on multiple items. If they didn't win the first one, they now have more money to spend on the second one. Um, but it also says you could just roll some dice to introduce that randomness of a regular auction. So figure out how you want to do it. And you could also probably ask it to list out NPCs and what their max value and what they would roll, etc., etc. Um, I'm sure you could do that. Now you've got bidding increments, winning the item, um, highest bidder, of course. It just tells you how to run an auction. Now post-auction, it talks about the payment uh, and just how you get that, and then transferring the item. So it's a little bit crunchy, but it doesn't really need to be because some of it's intuitive. Now here's the part that I didn't love, only because we've been in the same chat GPT window, so it's using a lot of the stuff that it knew about from before. You are in a little seaside town. They're not going to have, say, uh, the Fireclaw Ember Necklace, which is made from an ember from when the Diminished Peaks uh, exploded like a thousand years ago. Maybe they do, but I also don't think so. So you might want to change this list over if this was something that you wanted to do. What I would really encourage is, kind of like I said at the beginning, make your city and have this whole holiday creation be part of making your city. Just have it be another thing that you ask it about. Um, I won't go through this, but it did come up with probably like four or five things I would actually consider. And then towards the bottom, it got a little bit more, um, like a painting and a music box and things that you might just carry around on your player forever until someday they decide to be like, oh, I have a music box. I think that this displays pretty well how you could create some holidays and then flesh them out. Most of using ChatGPT is this same process of here's an idea give me some ideas. I now have more ideas and let me ask you to detail them out. And now let me use this whole thing together to generate a concept. And that is what ChatGPT is really good for. It's almost like having a person there that you can just kind of 
throw ideas back and forth and brainstorm. So use it like that and you will have a lot of success. But I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that you have some great holidays upcoming and look forward to next week's video and I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.